Hey out there, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd, here to take care of you today with another one of our comparison videos. Today, we are going to be comparing two things that, at a glance, like at, on the surface level, you may not have realized are actually exceptionally well suited to stack up against one another. That is the Jayco Eagle fifth wheel and the Keystone Montana High Country Series. Now note I specified the High Country Series, not Montana. The names between those two kind of really confuse people. And actually, I'll have a completely separate video showcasing the differences uh, when you go from a high country up to a full Montana, because the names are a little confusing. Um, so that, you know, by the fact that we're comparing this to an Eagle today, not a North Point, not a Pinnacle, that should really help you maybe understand a little bit clearer pecking order, for lack of a better phrase. Now, one of the areas you see these two things really stack up right on top of one another is the price. I always, you know, price is a big deal. We Everybody wants to talk about it eventually. I'd rather just get it right out of the way. And basically, uh, for a comparison, what I always try to do in terms of pricing is I try to find where two brands have the same floor plan. And in this case, I looked at the 347BH OK Jayco Eagle fifth wheel versus the 364-365 Bunkhouse uh, Montana High Country. And when you do that, you find out that the base cost of these things is like within two to 400 bucks of one another. Now, depending on what you choose to add for options, you can mess with that number high, low, either way. Eagle does offer more options. They will allow you to add more to it, which does mean that you could make an Eagle cost more, but you will then get more for it. But from the base dollars and cents perspective, they're basically an exact wash. So what we're going to see here today is not where one is better than the other, but where they exchange versus one another. Because when you only have so much money to spend and a manufacturer has to choose how they're going to invest it to try to attract that customer, uh, it becomes an equivalent exchange. Now, both of these brands are absolutely in a premier alpha level category. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, boil down infinite minutia between them. Instead, what I want to do is focus on big hitter factors. I want it to kind of showcase where each brand of trailer sticks out to me, basically. And, uh, and I think that those major qualities will probably be very reflective. And if you need more information, please call our family owned and operated facility here. Um, if you need hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything between the only thing we don't do at Halo RV is hidden dealer fees. So, where do they each stand out? First thing uh, I like to talk about a lot of times is warranty. Because when it comes to warranty, pretty much nobody beats Jayco. Now, both, uh, well, all Cougars, all Montanas, have a one plus three year structural warranty that includes allowances for full-time RVing. Cool thing on the Keystone warranty is it basically auto transfers to second owners, but I don't think you buy a big fifth wheel like this or the other swapping it out. I can barely speak, apparently. Um, however, Jayco's recently stepped up here. All members of the Eagle family, trailers, HTs, Big Eagles, and everything, and up through the Jayco series, have a two plus three year warranty with allowances for full-time RVing. So it is always hard to beat the Jayco warranty, but remember, it's a push and a pull. If you're getting something here, you're getting something else there, you know, in exchange. And as we go through these, what really helps understand some of the variances between them is the way that Eagle and Montana have have a different history. If you look way back, Eagle's one of the longest running names in RVing. They actually started as things like basically what a J Flight is now. It was the more simple series kind of starter trailer from Jayco. It's been a pop up. Eagle's been a motorhome, and today they're one of the most dominant fifth wheels uh, in history. Basically. Um, they were smaller in the past though. This is basically like the biggest they've been ever. And as a result, it kind of changes a little bit of their core history and DNA. So historically an Eagle is what would be called a mid profile fifth wheel that has kind of grown up into something larger. Whereas Montana basically is, has been, and always will be one of the biggest, baddest fifth wheels available out there. So as such, 
its alma mater, its core DNA, really resides up in this big RV segment. And they've each gone about attracting uh, buyers in a little bit different way. And that's not really helping you so far, but I think as we go through a couple things, you'll start to go, oh, that's what he meant by like a history of a small RV that grew up versus a big RV that's always been there. There's, there's a few differences that kind of stem from that. Now along the way, if you see something you like, if you really start to feel like this one or that one speaks to me a little bit better, if I've missed something or if you have a question, leave a comment down below. I will circle back. I try to hand review every single comment that comes through our channel. I pay a great deal of personal attention to every single viewer here and I, I really appreciate the feedback guys. You folks at home truly help shape our channel. And first to establish a couple similarities between these two, uh, they are both zero to 100 degree rated what people would call four seasons fifth wheel rvs they've accomplished it a little bit differently i'm not going to get into that though because the end result is basically the same they both got super walk-on roofs they're both roof solar ready uh they both have auto leveling and uh those are the main i think uh qualities they share in common that a lot of folks are looking for when they're shopping from here i want to start zeroing in on where each has uh its own little high points Starting here with Eagle on the outside, they will both use the Moride Stable Step system. Uh, a neat Eagle doing Eagle thing though, they like to add that extra uh, handle onto the steps right there for just easy come and go. Eagle's very detail oriented that way. Both of these RVs have lighting that flicks on so that you can see when you shift into reverse. However, like all Jayco towable RVs, they have more than just reverse lighting. Actually, Eagle is where the Jayco J-Smart safety lighting system began. If you're not familiar with it, uh, essentially what happens is very similar to what you see from a semi-tractor trailer when you go down the road. If you flick on, say, the right turn signal instead of just that taillight blinking, extra marker lights at the top back of the RV so that people can see them, because uh, sometimes your taillights are covered up, you know, and uh, all of your side marker lights will blink with your turn signal so that other people on the road have a better clear understanding of what you're doing that right now is something that virtually no other rv manufacturer is doing in the towable rv segment jaco does a standard on every single travel trailer and fifth wheel they make and they both have fully walkable roofs frankly i'm not aware of anybody in the fifth wheel segment that doesn't have a walkable roof and probably walkable slides as well which isn't something that's talked about a lot but it's out there um what I'm getting at here is on an Eagle, you're gonna pick up Jayco's Magnum Truss roofing. The roof uh, rafters basically are going to be almost identical between them, but Jayco is using plywood roof decking, which does give them a little bit higher load rating. That being said, I, I can't remember the last time I, I heard of a guy who heard of a guy who knew of a dude who had a uh, friend whose cousin's uncle's brother had a Montana roof issue from like snow load causing too much of a buildup or anything like that so the magnum truss roofing thing on on the eagles is it theoretically superior i i, I think sure is it functionally superior i don't know that it actually is i think it's largely a peace of mind quality but peace of mind is definitely not something to overlook you're spending a lot of money on any of these things and one of your number one questions is am i getting a good one you know so when Montana is and has been the single best-selling uh, luxury fifth wheel for, I think, 18 consecutive seasons now, you know you're not going wrong. Nobody maintains that level of success by building a crappy camper. But at the same time, do I like the idea that this theoretically holds more weight? Sure. So which one's better in that way, or does it even matter? That's really up to you. Now, when we start talking about tires, the debate becomes very eerily similar, actually, to the debate that we just had on the roof regarding things like the roof decking. Uh, Eagles are riding here on what I think almost anybody is going to agree with is a best-in-class tire package. They're riding on Goodyear Endurance radials. They're rated for up to 87 miles an hour, which, by the way, is just one mile per hour short of time travel. Unfortunately, no one is yet building a towable RV rated for time travel. Doc Brown would be disappointed, so would Marty. Point here, though, is that if what you're looking for, you like the idea of American-made, you like the idea of peace of mind, higher speed ratings, Jayco makes a lot of sense to you, but here's the thing. Montana, remember, is and has been the number one selling luxury fifth wheel for, I think, 18 consecutive years now. It's, it's absurd, the record they've had. 
You don't get and maintain a record like that by riding on bad tires. The word China bomb is thrown out there a lot. Here's the thing you need to understand about tires in the RV industry. They cannot be underrated anymore. RVIA, the governing body over the RV industry, has put in uh, requirements for manufacturers basically saying the kind of tires they have to use. All towable RV tires have to be able to exceed the load demands of that floor plan by at least 10%. So there's no underrated tires going on here. And kind of like the roofing thing, I don't know of a guy who knows of a guy who's heard of a dude who's had like, you know, they, they use crappy, crappy tires on my Montana and that caused me issues. It just, it's just not a thing that happens. So once again, it's really a debate of theory versus practice. In theory, that eagle over there with those good years, better tires. In practice, does it matter? I don't know. I, I don't know that it does. And Montana says instead of, you know, we'll, we'll invest some money in some other areas for us. So what kind of good things is Montana getting us? And a recurring theme here I think that you're going to start identifying is that where the Eagle is very good about giving you uh, some very fun, flashy features, the Montana High Country instead focuses a little bit more on bigger space, uh, larger structure. And I don't mean heavier built, I don't mean stronger, I just mean physically bigger. Remember, a Montana is and has always been considered a high profile fifth wheel. Now, the difference between mid pro and high pro has largely gone away in recent years. You will see what I'm talking about when we get to the front end of one of these things. But where you'll see some of those big RV differences are things like this. So that Eagle over there and this Montana High Country we're looking at are both electric automatic leveling. You get hydraulic when you go up to North Point or uh, full Montana in both Jayco and Keystone. What you're going to see though is that most of the high countries as they get larger will start to pick up six point uh, uh, auto leveling systems since the floor plans in a high country tend to be physically bigger they tend to outfit them with a larger more stable leveling system. Similarly, since the Montana high countries tend to be larger, they have these all standard outfitted with a little nicer pin box. Uh, whereas an Eagle has just a normal fixed pin box, high countries all have the road armor shock dampening pin box system here. So that, you know, this big thing doesn't jostle your truck around and bang you around the cab when you're going down the road. A large RV needs a little more shock dampening to get there. And although it varies by floor plan, Montana High Countries will offer a windshield on the specific models like this front living room right here. Eagles offer no front windshields on any of their trailers or fifth wheels. Now there's benefits and, and drawbacks to it, but it is a feature that I know in the big RV market a lot of folks are looking for. So I thought I'd mention that, but again, that's a little more floor plan specific and that doesn't really apply in a brand versus brand comparison necessarily. Other than the fact that Eagle just don't do them. One other major differentiating quality between the two is the chassis that they typically ride on. Now, kind of like the windshield, it can vary a little bit by floor plan, but most Montana high countries ride on a drop frame uh, chassis, which gives us an absolutely massive storage compartment. The front pass-through storage on an Eagle, I would certainly not say is insufficient, but it's not this. This is absolutely massive. And this is again, one of those kind of DNA differences in a true high profile fifth wheel versus I think a very well refined grown up mid profile like the Eagle. So kind of like we did when we were outside. Now that we're stepping inside, I want to establish kind of like some base ground rules here for comparison. Um, like both the Montana High Country and the Eagle are going to have dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners uh, that are both tied into the same central system. So you have a 30,000 BTU uh, ducting system. You've got uh, electric space heating fireplaces. They both have queen bed standard with the options for kings. Um, they're both going to have solid surface counters in the kitchen with sealed edge counters elsewhere. They're both going to have the same size refrigerator options available both directions. So uh, they're both going to have all breeze through windows. They're both going to have some nice kind of blackout shades. They do the shades a little differently, but they're both blackout shades. They have the same kind of pocket screwed cabinetry with um, hardwood cabinet door fronts. They're both going to accomplish those main qualities that I think a lot of people are looking for in a big fifth wheel very, very nicely. So from here, what I want to do is kind of show like room by room what each brand is doing 
and the little detail factors that they each bring into those rooms that kind of differentiate them so that you can sort of understand what they're doing. Because once again, they're basically the same budget. It just becomes uh, an exchange of features. So kind of starting from the top and working our way down, we're here in the Montana high country, and you see a couple things here that you don't typically find in the Eagle. First of all, you've got a one of those extra large vent fans like over your kitchen space uh, to really help exhaust a lot of cooking heat. There's a reason that they do it here on the Montanas though. Their uh, microwave is not a stovetop exhaust vent hood. So that device right there is acting as the cooking heat humidity uh, exchanger, basically. It's going to help exhaust all that kind of stuff out. Um, now, it kind of doubles as a little bit of a skylight. It does have a rain sensor, so if you step away, you go fishing, hiking, whatever, and can you imagine if the weatherman got it wrong? <gasps> well, <laughs> now you're covered. Another cool thing they do here is that is a 12-volt ceiling fan. to help keep some air swirling around. Now, this can really help with airflow, but if you're pumping your air conditioner, you don't want to be blowing all the cold air out there into Timbuktu. It's, it's just like your dad said, what do you think I'm heating the neighborhood? Well, kind of the same thing. Um, what is it about that? Like, I, I catch myself as I've grown up almost wanting to say that stuff. And that computer chip they embed in your head when you're a little, you know, child, and um, that, that tells you when you're, somebody's messing with a the thermostat, it's starting to it's starting to malfunction like if i even go, if i come too close to a microwave when it's cooking i like lose bowel control never mind that's that's a totally different story my point is you can keep the air moving around here which is an awful nice feature now i also mentioned that they're both doing some nice window shades you can see here in the high countries you've got these like straight blackout roller shades that come down here and they're good about giving us both ba balances and lambrequins one is the top window blocker one is the side window blocker i never remember which one's which it doesn't matter because they have them both uh they got topsies and sidesies and what that means is that light can't bleed through there so if you really want it like you got a migraine you're sleeping you have somebody over here in the hide of bed or if it's just scorching hot outside you want to block the sun you can do that um they're again they're both doing good shades i just kind of want to show you where those are different another thing where they're same but different is what they're doing in their slide flooring neither uh, well, frankly, at this point, Cougar, Montana, Eagle, North Point, Pinnacle, none of them are doing carpeted slides anymore, which is something I love about having all those names here at Halo RV. Montana uh, did it first. They, they're also doing it a little bit different. Like, that doesn't match uh, this flooring right here. That looks a little different than this. Um, it is basically like a, uh, a pontoon flooring material that you might find in like a, a nice kind of pontoon, tritune boat, something like that. It is... Like, if you need to scrub it, it's it's water spill, stain resistant, all that stuff. It's a really good material to have where you might have, you know, a drink, red wine, Kool-Aid, anything like that, or just food. Like, who wants to clean up spilled bacon and eggs out of their carpet? I don't. Now you don't have to. So what about Eagle? What's it got? It's got some things. Long story short, one of the first feathers in the cap of an Eagle unintentional there i'll take it though uh hashtag unintentional dad joke is their decors so in a montana high country uh you technically have two decors but the wood tones never change you're changing the sofa from a medium brown to a light medium brown if you didn't really know what you were looking for, I don't believe you'd really discern much of a difference. It just looks like a Montana to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. They look good. Eagle, though, gives us two wildly different decors. Like, what we're looking at here is the modern farmhouse decor. Eagle also offers this thing called uh, American Craftsman, which has a very rich, warm wood tone to it. There's very drastic differences between the two. We do like to keep a little bit of both here at Halo RV, but for color palette options, Eagle takes the cake on that one. Now, if you notice that Montana High Country was not short on windows, but not 100% of them open for airflow. For instance, this sofa side window here in an Eagle still opens for airflow. And you may also notice a little bit difference in their shades. Um, they don't go with the roller shades here on these Eagles. They have a, a like a straight black pleated shade. Does it let a little bit of light interchange through here? Eh, 
a little, but between the tinted windows outside and those shades, it ain't like anybody's peeking in at you while you're eating your hot pocket or whatever. Um, and also, I mean, look at the light here versus the light here. It really blocks the sun out. Another thing they're doing a little bit different is Jayco's very good about this. They do it all over the place. They fully frame out all these windows. And one, it just looks aesthetically very cool. But something like, I'm in, I'm in a lot of RVs. I've always got a camera in my hand. And something I've noticed is when I walk around a lot of RVs that have those roller shades, I'll hear this. And it starts to really get to you after a while. This shade doesn't do that. Now, that being said, to be fair, um, I'm usually in RVs without things like the stabilizers and the auto leveling systems engaged, meaning it's still in wibble wobble mode. The weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Um, I think that was before my time. I don't know. I just know that saying. Anyway, whereas in the uh, Montana, especially on the six point leveling system models, I don't think the RV is going to wiggle around. So I don't think that clickety clacking that I'm hearing is an experience that you will have at home. And I think, again, that kind of boils down into one of those um, theoretical versus practical debates. I don't know that the little clickety clacking is a, is a real thing. It's just something that I've noticed from like 12 years of experience doing this. 12 years. I started doing this when I still had some hair. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mentioned that they're both carpetless slides, but doing it a little bit differently. Personally, I love the look, the visual appeal to me, the seamless looking nature of the transition from the main kitchen floor over here to the slide floor in Jago's. I love that. I'm a big fan of that. They had to use a higher grade linoleum to accomplish that. That's a very unknown fact in this business, actually. Not all linoleum is created equally. If you use a lower grade linoleum, um, which a lot of manufacturers do use on their main floor. It will, it'll like get bunched up and curl when the slide out closes and press against something. Jayco had to use a better grade of linoleum here to prevent that from happening. Now, if it's super cold, is it possible to do that a little bit? Yes, but it won't maintain that. It'll relax back to its original shape. But because it is the exact same material as the main floor decking, it just looks so smooth in transition and to me it makes the whole rv look and feel a little bit larger i like it now transitioning over here to the kitchen space i kind of touched on this a little bit in the montana high country um like you'll see that eagle doesn't have one of those vent fans above and this is a personal crusade i have i've been very vocal to my uh jaco partners about this for a couple seasons now to the point that i go hey you know what would be great in an eagle and they go don't say a max air vent fan in the ceiling. We know, Josh. So if you agree with me, leave some feedback down here. Maybe we'll get it done. I don't know. So you might be going, well, why don't they have that there? Well, remember how I said in the high country, their microwave is not doubling as a uh, range hood exhaust fan. It's not pumping the cooking heat and humidity and vapor and moisture and all that stuff out of the side of the camper. Um... The Jayco one is. So they both have like a cooking heat exhaust fan. I like the extra vent fan up top. All that being said, that does mean we now have one more seal point that we need to manage. One more device, one more motor we need to manage. It's also a thermal hole in the ceiling. So there is a push-pull benefit both ways. Another really cool thing that Jayco started doing in their kitchens here on any full Eagle trailer or fifth wheel, North Point and Pinnacle as well, is their drinking water system. This is completely separate from any all holding tanks, anything like that. The idea here being instead of lugging along these giant uh, things of like bottled water, now we got all this plastic we got to worry about and are the sea turtles eating it? And I'm not belittling any environmental concerns, by the way. I'm just saying it's it's there's just way more material that goes with this. Plus, some people, well, if you leave bottled water laying around, doesn't that make you sick? Something like that. So Jayco's kind of done away with all that. Instead of having to have all this bottled water laying around, what they have down here in an eagle that will be below the sink is what basically looks like a, uh, you know that fancy French brand of water called Gouligon? Um, in America, I think we call it Culligan. Whatevs. 
uh, they basically have like a five gallon Culligan jug. Now what's cool about that is refilling those bottles compared to buying bottles of water, it's like pennies on the dollar. You're getting more water for less money and now you don't gotta worry about where you're gonna store all the stuff. This uh, operates on its own separate 12 volt pump. You can engage or disengage how you please. Again, it's completely separate from any and all water systems. And if you've seen any of our previous videos, then you know you can always hook it up to some delicious Hidden Valley Ranch. As we jump over to the Montana kitchen, what you'll see is like, like most things on a Montana, it's a little more subtle. It's a little more understated. It's a little calmer. It's not quite as extreme in your face kind of thing like you find on a lot of other brands. Um, and again, where what you really see in the kitchen is that DNA difference between an Eagle, which is like a traveling fifth wheel that has grown into something that you can extended stay in for a while versus a Montana high country, which is really built with the idea of extended stays that allows you to travel. Very subtle, fine line between the two. And at the end of the day, you can certainly use either fifth wheel for either purpose. But that core history between the two brands starts to really present itself. Now we already talked about this vent fan twice now, three times now, actually. Um, Again, though, we're talking about kitchen stuff. I think that's a major point within the Montana High Country kitchen that we need to discuss. Secondly, right below that, Montana High Countries are going to typically have bigger microwaves than an Eagle. Additionally, beyond that, you will usually see Montana High Countries tend to have a bigger kitchen overall. And where you kind of see that is like you've got the symmetrical countertop space on either side of the stovetop right there. You see that you've got a larger oven. You've got larger sink space. So uh, that, again, that DNA difference of a Montana being really built for extended stays primarily, and then the High Country series being made into a more mobile segment, it really presents itself here. But at the end of the day, that uh, people looking for that full-time RVing experience, the people are gonna be like, I'm going to be practically living in this thing. I need a bigger microwave, a bigger oven. I need more prep space, a larger sink. Those things you will find in a Montana high country more frequently than an Eagle. Now on a pretty similar note, you'll also see that high countries come with a central vacuum system here that you just typically don't find in an Eagle. Because again, uh, a high country is just a shade closer to a little more residential feeling, a little more residential razzle-dazzle wrapped up inside her. Now stepping up into the bathrooms here, we're in the high country still. I'll ping pong over to the Eagle in just a second. You'll see a lot of similarities. You'll see the you know porcelain foot flush stool. You'll see the nice sealed edge counters, big adult size sinks. Now this specific Montana high country that we're in has a massive, massive bathroom. So this is not normally indicative of all of their floor plans. It just gave me more space to be able to walk around with a camera in a tight area. You'll see two major differences in the bathrooms between them. First of all, just like you saw in the kitchen of the Montana High Country, in the bathroom you see another one of those XL rain sensoring vent fans. Eagle actually still has an enhanced vent fan. It's just very different. Um, I, like, I like features of both of them. And I'll explain what I mean when I get over to the Eagle. Secondly, when we get to the shower enclosure in a Montana high country, you see it is a all molded one piece heavy duty fiberglass job. If you want to do a hacksaw Jim Duggan power stomp in that thing, you ain't going to hurt it. I actually, in my older videos, I kind of forgot that I quit doing this. I used to literally jump up and down and stomp in these fiberglass showers to show the extra structure and rigidity that they have. This is a heavier duty fixture right here. Now up here in the Eagle bathroom, jumping over back to the Jayco Eagle now, you'll find that the grade of everything is basically the same, like neither has better built cabinetry or anything like that. They're using the same kind of hinges and drawer construction, the same kind of countertops and sinks even. What you'll find on an Eagle are these little touches, these interesting little enhancements like the backlit morning mirror. That's RV nerdism number 37. A uh, customer recently referred to it as a makeup mirror, which uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about. I, I woke up like this, and that's not saying it, it looks good. <laughs> 
Another thing Eagle does that's kind of cool is like above the shower. See that little black nubbin right above the shower right there? Well, during the daylight, it's not insanely impressive. But at night, it will basically make this entire shower enclosure glow so that you will be able to see uh, what you're doing. Now, we're going to transition over to bedrooms from here. And this happens to be a front bathroom model. But let's just say, hypothetically, this was a normal front bedroom. You see how that roof line tapers down as you approach the nose of a Jayco Eagle? I want you just to log that in your memory banks for a minute. Now, I mentioned how Eagles also have a little bit different bathroom fan. If you look above me, you see what I mean. Um, it is a little bit bigger than a common like travel trailer vent fan, but you can see how it's got a totally different housing. There's a couple different things here going on. Um, basically, Eagles have effectively a built-in sort of like Max Air vent cover, Camco vent cover, bathroom vent fan cover, effectively. You can open and close it from down here. You don't got to take a little twist knob and crank anything up and down. Now, on a Montana, on their like bathroom power, their Max Air vent lids, they actually use a housing that has the little clips where you can just set up a Camco cover on or whatever, cotter pin it in place or clip it in place, and not have to screw anything onto the RV. So, by default, Montana has a bigger fan with better airflow. By default, Eagle has um, a smaller fan, but with uh, any time use, it doesn't matter if it's rainy, you don't worry about water getting in there. Can you upgrade the Montana? Sure, but remember how we talked about like you could upgrade the Eagle pin box, but now you're talking money. We're certainly talking pennies on the dollar in comparison, but again, it's those kind of fine details that are gonna separate these two. They're they're sharp, man. They're sharp. Now, something I mentioned way early in this video, both um, Eagle and Montana High Country Standard have a queen bed. They both offer the option to upgrade to a king. Uh, it is unbelievably common for you to ever find a Montana of any variety, Montana or High Country, with a queen bed equipped on it at a dealership level. You will usually find almost exclusively kings in stock. You will probably find about 75% kings in stock on eagles, but you will find a few more eagles in stock some places with queens. What is cool, and I don't have a good example here to show you because we tend to stock kings on our eagles at Haylet RV. We'll get you anything you want. If you want an eagle with a queen bed or a Montana with a queen bed, we'll get it. Give us a call. Um, when you stick with a queen bed in an eagle, you get these really cool side stands built right into the slide out right there, and that is something a lot of manufacturers don't do. They'll just leave that space dead or blank. Jayco's very good about filling in the details. Um, now, both a high country and an uh, eagle bedroom are six and a half foot tall. Same as the uh, the bathroom. Like I, I mean, here's here's my hand above my head, just to give you a uh, a reference point. I got some I got some good height up here. I can walk around in this very very comfortably at six three with boots and hat. Um, something eagles doing though that high country is not. They have just adopted this. That is dual. Whisper air conditioning. So I mentioned that both High Country and Eagle have dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners. They're both using the quiet Coleman air conditioners. They're both whisper ducted for additional sound dampening in the living room. Only in an Eagle though, are you getting that between this, uh, between these two comparisons anyway, are you also getting that standard in the bedroom? So that is a really high class feature that you have to go up to a full Montana. You used to have to go all the way up to Pinnacle to get that from Jayco. Now they're doing it in Pinnacle North Point and all the way here, even into Eagle. That is also true of Eagle travel trailers. That's another really cool thing about Eagle. Montana doesn't make trailers, but the Eagle travel trailers are a part for part match with these festivals. Anything that I'm really sharing here, unless it comes to something specifically related to, to fifth wheel chassis stuff, translates 100% to a Jayco trailer. Uh, I'm not sure how I phrase that. I think I said that full Jayco trailer, full Jayco Eagle trailer, just for clarity there, because I don't want to get that one wrong. Now, back over to the Montana High Country, I've mentioned a few times how these um, are a high profile versus a mid profile that really grew up, where you really see a lot of that difference, because so far it's it's been pretty minor. Where you see it significantly, the size difference, is in that drop frame chassis and in most of the bedrooms. Now, again, bedroom configurations can vary by floor plan, but what I'm getting at here is like this. You see how they've got more head space above the bed? 
because remember that I told you log this in your memory banks how that the front of the eagle tapered downward that is like a signature calling card of a classic mid profile fifth wheel um it it isn't a a full profile all the way across it kind of cuts off at the at the front it's sort of like my hairline it's been receded back um that's twice a flash at, at, by the way if if the uh light reflecting off these uh in my forehead right here hasn't blinded you by now you must be wearing sunglasses at night like that old song goes but because the ceiling the the line does the roof line there we go doesn't taper down they can put a bigger slide all the way across they have more room to do it that also offers a uh one other major major defining quality difference between the two and that right here that is stackable washer dryer capability both uh eagle and montana high country are going to be washer dryer capable here's the thing though by default a montana high country is stackable capable um with only very specific floor plans like their um 376 377 front living the uh it's a front living room with a loft above the bed and under the stairs they only had room for a combo washer dryer by contrast the exact opposite is true on on eagle fifth wheels by default an eagle fifth wheel is combo washer dryer capable with very specific exceptions such as the 366 front bath that we were actually in a few minutes ago that's one of the only eagles out there that is stackable washer dryer capable now i think that'll give you I think you've got a pretty good idea overall here but what i want to do is make one last quick sweep of a miscellaneous category i call gadgets and i don't really know what else to call it um gadgets kind of sounds like cheap stupid things but these i think are are real content variances between the two of these two products that if you're not sold on one or the other now maybe these little things will help you get you there and what i mean by that are things like the central vacuum system right here it's not i've talked about that previously it doesn't really necessarily apply to the living room or the kitchen but it's it's certainly a, uh, an object that exists uh within a montana high country i think that would also include things like the vent fan or the 12 volt fan that we talked about over here overall though what you're going to see is that high country is not a gimmick gadget kind of brand they're a warm and fuzzy wrap you in something that is solid looks good feels good gonna hold up long term give you all that big living space the things you're gonna want that experience that you're gonna have every single day that is who and what montana is right there however when it comes to gadgets with bangs and gizmos i don't know there's brand doing it better nickel um <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, I turned into a carny. I don't. I don't know. I got too many teeth. Anyway, um, when I say gadgets was bangs and gizmos, it sounds very derogatory. What I mean by that, these are niche features that some people will find a lot of value in, and some people go, "That's not worth it to me." And that's kind of what I mean by Montana. Montana doesn't do niche stuff, um, especially in high country. They do the core value objects first and foremost. Um, whereas like i've already mentioned a couple here on eagle like the drinking water system like that different kind of bathroom fan they use uh the the dual whisper ducted some people that matters some it doesn't but nowhere do i think there's really a better example of that than right here with the j command uh bm pro system that they have so you don't get anything like this from montana until you go all the way up past so you go high country montana then you add the legacy package so for like probably at least twenty thousand dollars more than the current price point that we're looking at right now that's the soonest from keystone you get anything like this standard here on an eagle and i personally feel this is the best like smart system uh used in fifth wheels out there now it has all these little touch screeny things like all these systems have but what i love about it is the fact that we still just have buttons baby I can still just walk in and turn on the lights. I can select awning one, awning two, slide one, two, three, whatever the case may be, I can open and close those things right here. I can perform my core functions with a button. I don't have to go Bluetooth. I don't have to whip out my phone. I can just walk in and push a button. Now, I can also use a touch screen for all those things, but it does more than just that. It, it, it actually gives you buttons all over the place. 
like you'll find some by the sofa. And if you notice here, like this one, it'll let us turn on and off all of our ceiling lights, the pendant lights, dining lights, and all the exterior lights from our main seat. So if you've been inside for a while, it's gotten late, you wanna turn off your outside lights, you can do all that here. But the thing is, each one of those little mini pads that talks to the BM Pro system that we just looked at, they all do something a little bit different. They're context sensitive based on where you're standing in the RV. Like this one here in the bedroom, this is specific to bedroom function. So if you want to turn on your bedroom ceiling lights, if you want to turn on or off the lights directly above bed, or if you want to extend or retract the slide, you can do it here from the bedroom door. Whereas if I'm laying in bed, I want to be able to turn my lights on and off, but I don't want to open and close the slide when I'm laying in it. That's not good on the slide out. But what this pad will let you do is like turn on all of your exterior lights for like security purposes. So it's, again, you don't, have to whip out the phone you don't have to bluetooth and you don't have to sync and whatever else you don't have to have another app you can just push buttons and still use your rv so i think that's why i kind of call this gadgety or niche -y. i think that there's some people who are really really going to like and appreciate that but i think there's a lot of people who are like i am either not interested uh too tired maybe not of the age bracket where i te trust technology i get that Sometimes it's nice just to have a button, you know? So thank you very much for hanging out and joining us today. I hope you found this video beneficial. I really hope that because these things take a ton of time that I put together. If you learned something, um, do me a favor. Leave me a little comment, something that you picked up. Let me know what features you like on which RV and which one would you choose? Especially since the money is pretty much equal between them. Which one really kind of jumped out at you and why? I'd love to know that. Also, if you have any suggestions on another uh, comparison you'd like to see that might help me know which direction to go next. And as always, remember, if you like what you see in these video, they are for sale. <laughs> you can talk to the people in there and that's really all we ask in return for these efforts. All we ask folks is just for a fair opportunity to earn your business when you're ready here at our family owned and operated facility. They're on wheels, we can get them delivered. Um, and I don't care if you live in California, neither of these products have West Coast production. Regardless of which one you like, there still has to be a shipping cost to get it out there. That's kind of the benefit if you choose to come visit us here at Halet RV, you can chop out potentially three to $4,000 of shipping costs depending on where you live. Obviously, it's an example for someone who lives far away, but those are the kind of benefits that we can offer our clients here at Halet RV. So if that sounds good, leave some comments, hit that subscribe button, like our video, all that stuff you gotta say for YouTubers. <laughs> Short of that. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.